Another day, another story. What happens to our bodies after we die isn't a mystery, even if we may want it to be. If you want to confront the physical changes that take place, read on. Welcome to Tabo Eminent Channel. The first visible change to the body, occurring 15 to 20 minutes after death, is pallor mortis, in which the body begins to pale. Pallor mortis occurs because blood stops moving through the capillaries, the smallest of the body's blood vessels. This process is identical for all people, but it's less immediately apparent on people with darker skin. Meanwhile, the body cools, decreasing in temperature about 1.5 dGF, 0.84 dGC per hour. But even when the body is cold, it's still full of life. Scientists liken a decaying body to an ecosystem. Autolysis, which begins the process of decomposition, is also called self-digestion. Enzymes begin to digest the membranes of oxygen-deprived cells. Damaged blood cells pour out of their broken vessels in a rush of movement. When they settle in the capillaries and other small blood vessels, they trigger discoloration on the skin's surface. Though this discoloration, including a purplish-blue hue and reddish spots, begins to set in about an hour after death, it usually isn't visible until a few hours later. Changes like those are almost infinite after death. When the body is alive, filaments consisting mainly of the proteins actin and myosin interact, binding with or releasing from one another to contract or relax muscles. That makes body movement possible. In death, chemical bridges gradually form between the actin and the myosin. So the muscles contract and stay that way till the bridges break down. This stiffness, known as rigor mortis, occurs about two to six hours after death. Rigor mortis adds to the difficulty of performing an autopsy or preparing a body for a funeral, as the body loses the flexibility it had during life. It might take a little bit of force to break the rigor mortis up, mortician Holly Williams explained in an interview with BBC Future. Usually the fresher a body is, the easier it is for me to work on. Among the living things in the human body are bacteria. While the body is alive, they are concentrated in the gut, but are mostly kept out of other internal organs by the immune system. After death, though, these bacteria are free to feed on the whole body. First, they digest the intestines and nearby tissue. Then they expand their reach, entering the capillaries and making their way into the heart and brain to feast. One study by forensic scientist Gulnaz Javan and others suggested that it takes bacteria 58 hours to spread to the liver, spleen, heart, and brain. That stage of decomposition, called putrefaction, may be fully realized only after several days. The breakdown of carbohydrates, proteins, and other compounds in the body, caused largely by bacteria and by insect larvae, produces gases that swell the abdomen and eventually break the skin, which draws other insects to the feast. Decomposition takes time. How much time may depend on such factors as the cause of death, the environmental conditions, or even the clothing on the body. Decomposition is a continuous process, explained forensic scientist Emily Goff to Medical News Today, beginning at the point of death and ending when the body has been reduced to a skeleton. To slow that arguably gruesome process, humans have devised various practices for preserving the body. A well-preserved body has long been a chief mortuary concern, especially when it will be displayed during a period of mourning. After U.S. President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, his body was taken on a train ride through seven states so citizens could view it, some waiting up to five hours for the honor. Embalming is one way of preserving a body after death. A wide variety of substances, including vinegar, wine, brandy, and honey, have been used to pickle corpses and thus delay putrefaction. In the modern procedure of embalming, blood is drained from the veins and another fluid, usually based on a solution of formaldehyde in water, is injected into a major artery. Cavity fluid is also removed and replaced with a preservative. Though this version of embalming isn't permanent, it serves its purpose, giving the body a lifelike appearance in the days after death when it will be viewed by mourners. Whether you choose to be embalmed in honey, embalmed the modern way, or not embalmed at all, you don't have to worry too much about decomposition sneaking up on you. Chances are, your body isn't going from flesh to bone anytime soon. The process that occurs in the body after death is known as decomposition. It involves a series of physical and chemical changes as the body breaks down over time. The exact timeline and details can vary based on factors such as environmental conditions, temperature, and whether the body undergoes any preservation methods such as embalming. Here is a general overview of what happens to the body after death. Immediate changes. As soon as death occurs, the body begins to cool down, a process known as algor mortis. 
Rigor mortis, the stiffening of muscles, sets in within a few hours after death and then gradually dissipates. Autolysis and putrefaction. Shortly after death, cells in the body begin to break down through autolysis, a process where enzymes start to digest cells from within. This is followed by putrefaction, during which bacteria in the gastrointestinal tract and other microorganisms proliferate, leading to the release of gases and the characteristic odor of decomposition. Decomposition stages. Fresh stage. This is the initial stage where autolysis and putrefaction begin. Bloat stage. Gases produced during putrefaction cause the body to swell and bloat. C. Active decay stage. This is characterized by the breakdown of tissues and organs. Advanced decay stage. The body continues to break down and only bones, hair, and cartilage may remain. Dry remains. In the final stage, all soft tissues are gone and only skeletal remains and hair persist. Insect activity. Insects, such as flies and beetles, play a significant role in the decomposition process. They lay eggs on or near the body and their larvae, maggots, feed on the decaying tissue. Environmental factors. External conditions, such as temperature, humidity, and exposure to air, can influence the rate of decomposition. Bodies buried in the ground may decompose differently from those exposed to the elements. Postmortem changes. Depending on the circumstances surrounding death, additional changes may occur, such as liver mortis, settling of blood, rigor mortis, and decomposition. It's important to note that the process of decomposition is a natural and complex biological phenomenon. In certain situations, bodies may be preserved through embalming or other methods, altering the usual course of decomposition. Additionally, forensic experts may study post-mortem changes to gather information about the circumstances of death. The small, dimly lit room held a somber atmosphere as Dr. Emily Rodriguez, a forensic pathologist, meticulously examined the lifeless body on the stainless steel autopsy table. The once vibrant soul had departed, leaving behind a vessel that would soon undergo a remarkable transformation. As Dr. Rodriguez initiated the post-mortem examination, she observed the first signs of death's grip on the body. The skin had started to lose its warmth, and rigor mortis had set in, rendering the muscles stiff and unyielding. Time was of the essence, and the forensic team worked efficiently to document the initial changes before the inexorable march of decomposition unfolded. In the days that followed, the body entered the fresh stage of decomposition. Autolysis, the body's self-digestion, began its silent work. Enzymes, once instrumental in sustaining life, now turned inward, breaking down cells and tissues. Meanwhile, the first whispers of putrefaction emerged, heralded by the subtle release of gases and the faint scent of decay. As the bloat stage took hold, the body underwent a grotesque transformation. Gases produced by bacterial activity within the gastrointestinal tract inflated the abdomen, distorting its once familiar contours. The forensic team documented the changes meticulously, understanding that each phase held crucial information about the circumstances leading to this inevitable end. In the active decay stage, the body became a battleground for microorganisms. Bacteria, fungi, and other decomposers voraciously consumed the soft tissues, leaving behind a skeletal framework that hinted at the person's former identity. The forensic entomologist on the team meticulously collected insect specimens, their life cycles weaving a narrative that would aid in determining the time of death. As the weeks passed, the remains entered the advanced decay stage. Dr. Rodriguez noted the progressive deterioration of organs and tissues, with only the resilient elements like bones, hair, and cartilage persisting. The room, once filled with the stench of decomposition, now bore witness to the quiet culmination of nature's recycling process. In the final phase, dry remains told the tale of a life that had once thrived. Skeletal remnants lay in repose, a silent testament to the transient nature of existence. Dr. Rodriguez, having completed her examination, reflected on the intricate dance of life and death, the scientific artistry that unfolded in the wake of mortality. The story of decomposition, though morbid, was an integral part of forensic science, an eloquent dialogue between biology and time, offering insights into the mysteries that surrounded the departed. And as the door closed behind Dr. Rodriguez and her team, the small, dimly lit room bore witness to the ceaseless cycle of life, death, and the quiet return to dust. As the forensic team completed their thorough investigation, they found themselves drawn into the intriguing complexities of the decomposition process. Dr. Emily Rodriguez, an experienced forensic pathologist, meticulously documented every stage, 
understanding that the secrets of the deceased were hidden within the subtle nuances of decay. In the fresh stage, the once vibrant body began its journey toward dissolution. Autolysis, like a silent symphony of cellular disintegration, played out within the body's intricate structure. Dr. Rodriguez carefully examined each tissue, recognizing the microscopic battles between life and death. The bloat stage brought an unexpected twist to the narrative. The room, once sterile, now echoed with the unsettling sounds of expanding gases. The forensic team, clad in protective gear, faced the grotesque reality of a body transformed by internal fermentation. Despite the discomfort, they pressed on, collecting invaluable data that would later unveil the secrets concealed in the stages of decay. As the active decay stage unfolded, the body became a canvas for microbial artistry. The scent of putrefaction permeated the air, a reminder of the relentless pursuit of equilibrium in the natural world. Insects, drawn by the aromatic allure, performed a delicate ballet of life, death, and rebirth. The forensic entomologist meticulously cataloged their intricate routines, unraveling a timeline that would soon shed light on the circumstances surrounding death. With the progression to the advanced decay stage, Dr. Rodriguez found herself contemplating the resilience of bones and the quiet surrender of softer tissues. Organs, once vital, succumbed to the relentless forces of decomposition, leaving behind a skeletal framework that told the story of a life extinguished. In the final act, the dry remain stage. The forensic team marveled at the elegance of nature's recycling process. Skeletal fragments, bathed in a soft, ethereal light, became the silent witnesses to the transient nature of existence. Dr. Rodriguez, guided by a sense of reverence for the deceased, completed her examination with a profound understanding of the delicate interplay between life and death. As the autopsy room emptied, the door closed behind the forensic team, leaving the remains in peaceful repose. The story of decomposition, though inherently somber, had served a higher purpose, the pursuit of truth in the face of mortality. Dr. Rodriguez, now exiting the room, carried with her not just the scientific findings, but a profound respect for the journey that every life undertakes, from the vibrancy of existence to the quiet embrace of decomposition and the eventual return to the cosmic tapestry of existence. Thanks for watching. Request you to subscribe the channel.